all right guys in this lecture as i have mentioned uh, in the previous video like we will be discussing about these points in next couple of lectures okay so in this lecture we'll particularly discuss about understanding the problem okay so before uh, diving into this uh, this topic i just want to highlight that most of these strategies are adopted from george polia he have wrote a book which is uh, basically mathematical book whose name is like how to solve it okay it can be a great resource if it if you if anyone wants to become a better problem solver right it's going to help you a lot okay so now let's discuss about understanding a problem so let's imagine like you are sitting in front of your interviewer okay and there is some time constraint like there is some time limitation and your uh, your interviewer gave you a problem then the natural behavior of the um candidate is like his heart beat started racing like and then right after getting a problem he'll try to start jumping into the solution right away he'll try to start coding right away right without even asking like uh, the enough question without even getting the enough information from the interviewer and he end up uh, not solving that problem right even though in starting he will think like he is solving it he is he can able to do it but end of the day like without get with lack of information he will solve it he will solve something else right so what should you do like uh, you should first try to take all the enough information from the interviewer right obviously you are going to get better in this with time but these are the best practices i'm going to tell you like which you should do which you should start implementing right from the beginning of your career okay so in understanding a problem like uh, there are few things which you should consider okay so can you restate the problem in your own words let's say you got a problem the your interviewer gave you a problem okay so can you restate in your own words okay and then what are the inputs that we need to pass into the problem so what should be the type of input how many inputs we have to pass into a problem what will be the actual input which we have to pass into a problem let's say you are creating a function okay then what will be the input in that function in some cases these questions really does matter a lot okay and then what are the outputs that should come out of a of a solution of the problem okay so uh, like interviewers most of the time give you a problem and then they say like uh, this could be the answer right so you can ask them like what should be the output okay what should be the data type of the output like what i have to return out of this uh, so like this solution this problem uh, solution of this problem okay and then can the outputs be determined from the inputs in other words you can say like do you have in, uh, enough information to like solve the problem okay so let's say if we have uh, if we are passing two inputs so can the outputs be determined from those two inputs okay you have enough information uh, with the help of which you can solve that problem and you can return some output okay and then the fifth point you should consider is how should you label the important pieces of the part of the problem right so let's say you are creating a function okay you are implementing something you are creating some variables uh so let's take an example of uh, write a function which takes two numbers and return them some okay we'll get into it in a couple uh, in a minute okay so let's take this one as an example okay so here you have created two variables in small uh, question you can simply name it as num1 num2 or something right but this thing really does matter when you are solving a large problem okay mm -hmm. when you have to write like uh, 50 60 lines of code right so in that case like um uh, naming the pieces accurately does matter a lot it will help you solve your problem step by step very easily okay now let's jump into a question okay so now let's say <clears throat> let me stretch it a little bit okay so you guys can see completely what's going on here so these are the again five points which i have just now discussed with you guys so let's try to understand in terms of a question so let's say your interviewer gave you a question which is write a function which takes two numbers and return their sum so do you think guys like uh, it's a uh, enough information which you have to solve a problem 
if you think like at least in javascript it's not enough information right so let me show you how let me break it down so the first point was like can you restate the problem into your own words so let's say you have a question write a function which take two numbers and return their sum so you can restate it in your own words in order to understand the problem completely you can say right uh, like uh, implementing addition or uh, create a function to add to, or to uh, some two numbers you cannot like repeat the word to word whatever your interviewer said right you can say something like implement addition okay so this will help you understand like yeah in this problem we have to implement the addition okay so this is first part quite easy quite simple but it may impact a lot okay now the second one it looks very easy it looks like just open and shut case but it is not and let me show you how <coughs> so what are the inputs that we need to pass into a problem okay so it, it looks like uh, you know we have to create a function which will accept two numbers and then we have to create a sum right it's a silly question it you will think like it's a silly question to ask this to the interviewer like what should be the inputs but in terms of javascript at least in javascript we have some number limitation constraints right number size constraints and let me show you what is that okay so let me uh, <coughs> quickly yeah so let's use number it's a number function built in in javascript and then max safe integer okay so as soon as i hit enter so this is the largest number which javascript can represent safely okay so that means if you try to add subtract or do any sort of calculation with the number which is larger than this one it is simply not going to represent or it is simply not going to give you the correct answer okay it will not simply give you the accurate answer okay javascript will try to represent it as accurate as possible but end of the day it will not represent that accurately okay so we do have the uh, size constraint in javascript so it really uh, matters a lot when you ask like what should be the size of the input and what what will be the inputs actually right so it can be from minus infinity to plus infinity or it can be from 0 to 100 like what should be the size of the number okay so i write it down here size of the okay and you can ask like uh, uh, the inputs are going to be only the positive numbers or the negative numbers okay so let me write down that as well okay second positive or negative okay third what what if like uh, someone passed string or something or we just have to pass numbers only okay Okay, most of the time interview will say like you just have to pass number. They don't worry about uh, any other edge cases. Um, we can say so called edge cases, right? So they will say like you just have to pass number or something. But these things really does matter when you solve a problem, right? It will help you a lot to solve the problem accurately. Now, what are the outputs that should come out of a solution? Okay, so um, let's say. Um, uh, you have to ask the uh, interview like what should be the output he said like add two numbers and return now what you have to return do you have to return a floating point number do you have to return a string of the sum of those two numbers what exactly do you have to return or do you have to return the integer which you are getting from the uh, which you are getting as an input okay so here you can ask what to return a string as an output a number as an output or a floating point
output okay so these are some sort of questions you can ask look okay so can the outputs be determined from the input what are the outputs that should come out of the solution okay yeah now we have the fourth point right so can the outputs be determined from the inputs or you can say do you have enough information like uh, uh, to solve the problem so uh, it's like similar to uh, similar to the third point like what should come out of the solution of the problem okay so here you can ask like whether it should be a number it should be a string or what it should be right so here we have to do the same thing like what should be the output like does it determine from the input so let's say uh, you have created a function which accepts two numbers right so what if someone passes just one number what if uh, someone doesn't pass the another number or someone passes empty string so you have to ask the interviewer like the outputs will be determined from the input or not so in case something like that happens then do i need to handle the edge cases like in case someone passes some invalid number in that case what i will do what i should return okay so <clears throat> in case of any invalid value passed what i return okay so most of the time like interviewer say don't worry about those things you just implement uh based on the numbers so let's consider every time you will get number only okay so most of the time interviewers say uh, say these things in the interview settings but this helps you a lot to clarify like what you are going to build okay so it you will get a clear picture whether you have to handle the edge cases or not in the problem right because if you solve the problem without asking these questions then in case if your interviewer asked you back like if i pass the invalid number then the ball will be on your court right the game will be <laughs> changed right that time so better instead of them asking you these questions you ask them in the starting of the uh, starting of writing the solution of the problem right now how should you label the important pieces of the data okay that are a part of problem this is one of the interesting thing let's say you are creating a function okay let's think about the implementation so in function you will pass two arguments right number 1 number 2 let's label them for now okay and then you are creating a sum of that so you can create a variable uh, uh saying sum and then or total sum or something and then there you do the addition and then you return that okay so in case of small example like giving them random name is just fine right that doesn't matter a lot but if you are if you are solving a large problem those naming conventions does matter a lot right that will help you reach your solution step by step right so that you have to keep in mind while working in a problem okay so yeah this is it for this lecture guys in the next lecture we will understand um the second point related with some concrete examples okay so this is the one which we are going to understand in the next lecture and yeah these things whichever i have just explained you can take a screenshot of it i'll quickly expand it a little bit like this okay you can take a screenshot of this one and then you can take screenshot of this one as well let me quickly zoom out a little bit so you guys can easily understand it right or i'll do one thing i'll drop this this example in the description so it will be easy for you guys to understand okay this one i'll drop in the uh, description of uh, the video right so yeah this is it for this lecture see you in the next one